For more than 100 years, credit unions have provided financial services to their members in the United States. But what is their history? How did they get started? And what is NCUA? Before the mid-1800s, bank loans were a dream for most Americans. Unless someone guaranteed repayment, banks refused most loan requests. If misfortune struck, farmers and small businesses often went under with no hope of receiving even a modest loan to recover. The credit union movement grew from a simple idea. By pooling their savings and making loans to neighbors and coworkers, people could achieve a better standard of living for themselves and others. The credit union movement began in Germany. In 1848, Hermann Schulze de set up a credit society to serve shopkeepers and other urban workers who had been forced to pay very high interest rates charged by local loan sharks. In 1864, Frederick Wilhelm Reifiesen organized a similar cooperative for farmers. These early credit unions became the model for today's credit unions in the United States. The key principles of the movement were volunteerism, self-help, one member, one vote, consideration of a person's character as well as net worth. Alphonse Desjardins, a Canadian journalist, proved instrumental in bringing the movement to the United States. In 1909, Mr. Desjardins and Pierre Jay, the Massachusetts Commissioner of Banks, played key roles in getting the first law for organizing credit unions enacted in Massachusetts. They also helped organize the first credit union in the United States, St. Mary's Cooperative Credit Association in Manchester, New Hampshire. Edward Filene, who many consider the father of U.S. credit unions, and his colleague, Roy Bergengren, a poverty lawyer, became convinced cooperative credit could work in the United States, a belief that was reinforced in a subsequent meeting with Alphonse Desjardins. Together, Mr. Filene and Mr. Bergengren advanced legislation to issue credit union charters in states across the country. In 1921, they also organized the Credit Union National Extension Bureau. The Bureau's main goals were to enact credit union laws, form new credit unions, and promote the general philosophy of credit unions. Through the 1920s, credit unions provided a source of inexpensive credit to purchase products like automobiles and washing machines. The popularity of credit unions grew because commercial banks and savings institutions generally showed limited interest in offering such consumer loans. By 1930, 32 states had adopted credit union laws with a total of 1,100 credit unions. In the aftermath of the start of the Great Depression, the time had come to create federal credit unions. In 1934, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed the Federal Credit Union Act into law, authorizing the formation of federally chartered credit unions in all states. It means, I am sure, that the masses of the people of the nation firmly believe that there is great and actual possibility in an orderly recovery through a well-conceived and actively directed plan of action. The purpose of the federal law was to make credit available and promote thrift through a national system of nonprofit cooperative credit unions. The federal credit union section was also formed, creating a national system to charter and supervise federal credit unions. The credit union section was first housed at the Farm Credit Administration until it was transferred to the Department of Agriculture in 1939. The credit union section remained a part of the Department of Agriculture until May 1942, when the first War Powers Act was used to transfer the section to the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. As the credit union industry grew, the agency moved from the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation to the Federal Security Agency, and then finally, the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare.
After 36 years of moving the regulatory function from one agency to another, Congress created the National Credit Union Administration on March 10, 1970, as an independent agency. In 1978, Congress passed a law to create the three-member board that governs NCUA today. The National Credit Union Share Insurance Fund was also formed on October 19, 1970, to ensure credit union deposits. In the independent credit union spirit, the Share Insurance Fund was created without tax dollars and capitalized solely by credit unions. Today, the Share Insurance Fund protects individual accounts up to $250,000 at all federal credit unions and the overwhelming majority of state chartered credit unions. No member has ever lost a penny of insured deposits at a federally insured credit union. On January 20, 1971, President Richard M. Nixon signed an executive order establishing the NCUA seal. The seal has four unique design elements that demonstrate NCUA's commitment to protecting the millions of Americans who depend on credit unions and ensuring the safety and soundness of the cooperative credit system. The first element is the roof, which symbolizes cooperative protection shared by the common bond members. The second element is the door, which symbolizes the opportunity and protection of members' shares through the Share Insurance Fund. The third element is the blue background divided into four sections. This symbolizes the major advantages of credit union membership. Cultivation of thrift, encouragement to save regularly, granting of loans for provident purposes at a reasonable interest rate, and budget and consumer counseling. The final element is the agency's name surrounding the seal. This symbolizes the agency's commitment to protecting the cooperative credit system and its membership. The 90s brought a strong economic climate, causing federally insured credit union membership to flourish. In 1998, President Bill Clinton signed legislation restoring expansion privileges and providing for multiple common bond credit unions, which allowed credit unions to increase fields of membership and mergers. In the years since the passage of the Federal Credit Union Act, credit unions have worked to offer loans and provide needed financial services to hardworking Americans. Today, federally insured credit unions have more than $1 trillion in assets and nearly 100 million members. NCUA and its more than 1,000 employees continue to work to protect and enhance a credit union system that is safe, sound, and secure.